The story of our last in five minutes. Let's go. We open up with a man driving his car down a dark road that leads him to a large building in the background. We find out from a file on his passenger seat that the building is Mount Massive Asylum and that he received an anonymous letter from an orderly inside the asylum. The bad things are going on there and our journalist character Miles Upshaw is here to expose the truth. We gain entry to the building from a side entrance and the power goes off, causing us to use the night vision on our camera as a last resort to see. We find the library of the building and it is filled with dead people, showing us that this trip might be a bit more dangerous than Miles first anticipated. We get a surprise from this lipless gentleman as he throws Miles down to the bottom floor. As Miles is drifting to and from unconsciousness, a man approaches and says that Miles is an apostle sent by God and to guard his life as he has a calling. Miles gets up and finds some patients watching television. The only issue is the fact it's completely static. We continue to the security room and can see the man from earlier turning off the power on the security camera. We are forced to leave and turn the power back on. When we do, we return back to the security room and are attacked from behind and injected with a syringe. The man tells us that we cannot leave and that there is much more for us to witness. To show us the wall rider, his god. That's when we can see on the monitor a bunch of soldiers being thrown around like rag dolls with nothing there. We wake in a padded room and find some twins outside the room. They essentially look at Miles like a walking chew toy and take dibs on which of his organs they will take for themselves. Miles takes his leave and attempts to find a way out of the asylum. He is chased through some hallways by some patients screaming about the wall rider before we hear a voice on the radio to jump into the dumb waiter in order to live. Turns out it was a really bad idea as the person on the radio has his own plans for Miles. He places him in a wheelchair and straps him in for the ride. We see the place he calls his clinic as he explains to one of his screaming patients that he doesn't need his tongue anyway. When we reach his surgery room, things go from bad to really bad as the doctor removes a few of Miles' fingers. When the doctor momentarily leaves, Miles makes his escape. We get to the elevator, but unfortunately the doctor clued onto our antics and attempts to stop Miles. He ends up jammed between the elevator and the floor and dies. We find Father Martin nearby and he tells us that he is happy we survived and didn't end up in little pieces from the doctor and to meet him outside. We continue through the kitchen and find it all on fire. A patient is sitting alone on the bench explaining that Murkoff has taken everything from them, using them for experiments, and that nobody cares about a few forgotten lunatics, so he wants to burn the entire place to ashes, but tells us the way out so we can survive. Now outside, we get our first glimpse of the wall rider that the priest worships. It can only be seen on our night vision camera, and it appears as a floating skeleton. The father praises us now that we have seen the wall rider with our own eyes, telling us now that we have begun to understand and take his leave. We continue throughout the asylum and find a movie theatre with a film playing. It's an excellent interview from Rudolf Wernick. The interviewer asks Wernick if the film has been doctored or is fake in some way, to which Wernick explains that everything is real. The interviewer mentions instances of spontaneous bleeding and that half a dozen test subjects have begun to develop brain tumours. Wernick responds that the test subjects' autopsies show that the tumours were made from lead. It requires a very unique human mind, and the patient would require proximity to death, to overwhelming madness. That is what is required to turn on the morphogenic engine. He says that Project Wall Rider is a gateway to something, but the film cuts off. We continue on and find Father Martin inside his church. He is on the cross and says that he will soon be with the Wall Rider and that our calling way to witness this moment and tell the tale. He gets burned up and we decide it's time to head out of this place for good. Unfortunately, we stumble across an underground facility below the asylum. We run into this lipless guy again and the wall rider appears and makes short work of him. A voice nearby asks us to go speak with them and when we do, we find out that this is Rudolf Wernick from the film. He explains he is only alive thanks to Billy and that he takes care of him because Billy thinks Wernick might be his father. He calls him a poor idiot. He explains that Wall Rider is actually technology made from nanohazards, little microscopic machines that are created into the human body using cells. He says that he has lost control of the technology and Billy before asking Miles to kill him, since nobody can leave Mount Massive while he lives. We find the device used and also find Billy in the machine. We leave to turn off the life support systems and have a very painful run-in with the Wall Rider. Miles gets beat up badly, but eventually Billy dies and causes the Wall Rider to die alongside him. An injured Miles reaches an exit door to the facility, but is greeted by Wernick and a bunch of armed guards before being lit up like a Christmas tree. As you think Miles is dead, you can hear the sounds of screaming as Wernick mentions that Miles has now become the host of the Wall Rider after Billy's death. The screen then cuts to black, and that is the story of Outlast in Five minutes. If you would like a complete breakdown, we have a full story explained video on the channel that goes over all the smaller details. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe for more content in the future. Peace.